Happy 1st of December, everyone. Now, if you haven't picked up on things during the past how many years it's been, I'm from Romania. The manele bumping through the walls from one of my neighbors should probably tip you off, because I don't think the audio scrubbing is gonna fix that in post. And today, on this well, slushy winter's day, we are celebrating our national holiday. Celebrating the first time when all the kingdom, well technically it's not the first time, there was one more time in the 1600s, but the last time when all the kingdoms of the Romanian peoples were united. That uh, didn't really last long because World War II happened and uh, the genocides and then communism, so uh it's not been a, a great century for us. It's not been a great last 50 or so years for us especially. And you'd have thought that once uh, we, we got rid of the communism, things would have improved. But uh, it it kind of didn't, like at all. Romania is, is the kind of place where uh, somebody can sell off the entire commercial fleet of the country. Like hundreds of ships just sold off for pennies going to the budget and a lot of people that shouldn't have made money off it becoming millionaires and then becoming presidents and doing worse things and never uh, being held accountable for anything. It is the kind of country where a bunch of newborn babies will die in a fire in a hospital and the only person held accountable will be the nurse that left the room for a couple of minutes. Not literally everybody else responsible for that hospital being in that state. The country where some Somebody that totally, completely and absolutely destroys the justice system is now being rewarded with a lifelong uh, position of supervising the justice system. Eh. It's... I, I think the American president had a, had a term for countries like mine and people got upset that he ever used that term in the first place but to mine it applies. We are a terrible, terrible nation because we are run by people who are never held accountable, ever. There is no accountability. Everything is run by various political parties that are, they're, they're, they're mafia families. That's it. There's, there's no politics in it. It's just the mafia. You are in it, under it, and that's it. There is no escape. If you want to get a bit metaphorical, you could consider uh, Romania kind of like uh, like that Serbian film. Because the point of it was that you're screwed non-stop from when you're born until, well, well after you die. All because constantly there are people in charge that are never held accountable ever and somehow you have to make a living in such a system a lot of people haven't they've left the country they've abandoned it because well why wouldn't they if they have even a slightest chance of being treated like a human being somewhere else even if they have to scrub toilets all day th there's a level of humanity that's missing around here now why am i mentioning all this well, this is a preface to uh, the rest of the video because even though Romania is, oh, uh, by the way, Americans, Romania is not a Baltic country. I think your CNN told us we were at one point. Also, we don't have the flag of the Ukraine. Also, why do you call it the Ukraine? I don't get it. It's just Ukraine. It's something that bothers me. Like, like when people call Kiskani, Kiskani, like... I live next to it. There is no sh in the name. So as I've said, it's a terrible, horrible place that has tried to kill me on more than one occasion. But it's an old place. And old places tend to accumulate a lot of culture. Here especially because we've been at the confluence of empires, well, since empires were a thing, Romans, Turkish, Persian, Bulgarian, Slavic, Polish. Poland had an empire, right? The, the Prussians? Austro-Hungarians. Lizard people probably at one point. We, we have some of the oldest mountains in the world. Well, technically they're kind of hills now because, you know, erosion uh, kind of <laughs> them to not Thing, but it's it's some of the oldest surface landmass in the world. So you can get a lot out of this place, and I don't mean just by robbing it blind of its resources, like they've done to the mountains. Looking at you, IKEA, and uh, the uh, people in the PNL and PSD and UDMR and whatever other pretend political parties out there earn a pretty penny off it. You can get a lot out of its culture because we have such a rich 
culture here. It is just superb. When people say melting pot of culture, they mean something like this place, where you can go from the seaside to the mountainside in... Well, now, technically, it's just like 300 kilometers, like... 140 miles. It's gonna take you 50 hours. Uh, if you're driving, it'd be faster to walk because we have no roads because one of the uh, former uh, ministers of transport who was also president and sold off our fleet said we didn't need the uh, highways because, you know, it had to commit to making them and actually have to do something. You can go from little Paris, which is Bucharest, our capital, it, which has its own Arc de Triomphe. By the way, switching accents from English to French mid-sentences uh, like whiplash for your tongue. You can go from Little Paris to Little Chicago, which is Vaslui, where you will get murdered. Now, technically, um, there's also Galatz, which is also a place you can get murdered, and Braila is a place where you can get stabbed. I live in Braila, by the way. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful town. It, it makes me break out my, my, my vampire accent. It's, a, it's just a pretty, pretty, pretty awful place. But you have such beauty here, such wonder here, and people that have been molded by suffering and you know that kind of makes really good artists so in all this beauty under like a, a ton of crap and suffering and regrettable actions during world war ii and after it and before it and let's not think about it in all of this there haven't been a lot of video games only in the past five years can i truly say that the gaming industry the game development industry of romania is picking up steam it's even on steam and now we are maybe maybe getting to the point where we should have been 20 years ago where poland was 20 years ago where the rest of the world was 50 years ago there's an old joke that romania is 50 years behind the time so if the apocalypse happens move to romania you've got 50 years left so that now we're actually getting to make games games that some of you may know and and not just your average ubisoft game that are various ubisoft studios or electronic arts games that are electronic arts studios or activision games that our outsource farms contribute to we actually have games made in Romania by Romanians, sometimes even about aspects of Romania. We have fantastic things like Gibbous, a Cthulhu adventure, or Yaga, or that thing about the priest that goes back to his hometown that I forget the name of, or Door Kickers. We've got a bunch of them. We even have one about you killing the goddess of diarrhea. I don't think that's how the name is pronounced. It, but inspired heresy is about killing diarrhea, basically. And now, now is the time that maybe we'll get the games that I wanted to see for a long time the games that i feel that should exist based on our culture based on our strange and fascinating hodgepodge of a country so if you're still in this probably gonna put a skip code like at the bottom so you can jump to the actual top seven but then say it with me this is the top seven romanian games that should exist that being said let's get started with number seven grand theft auto bucharest this game basically already exists ever since gta 3 came out people have modded romania into it they started with cars then with characters then with all sorts of other crap until you get to the point where you kind of have a similitude uh, a simulacrum if you will of bucharest in in Grand Theft Auto. But it's not just about a mod of an existing game. It has to be its own thing. It has to be the essence of crime life in Bucharest translated into a video game, much like Grand Theft Auto was for a crime life-ish kind of situation in the United States. And there was a bit in London as well. And GTA 2 was kind of weird. Most importantly, it doesn't just need to have the, the surface aspects of Grand Theft Auto where you just punch people, steal cars, and then uh, do a flip while you jump over the Dumbovica River. No, no, no. It also has to have the substance of GTA in terms of why it's depicting what is happening. Namely, the satire, the holding things up to a light and making you think about them a bit. Now, GTA has kind of lost this uh, since it's more focused on uh, having terrible missions 
and no plot, but it seems inevitable that such a game will exist. Something akin to Grand Theft Auto set in Bucharest where you can live the life of crime that you can kind of also see depicted sometimes in our cop shows and some movies. There's a series called Shadows on HBO that's kind of popular and you can tell it's made in Romania, the, the TV show I mean, because it, it has that, that forced European vibe to it where everybody has to be like butt naked for at least a scene for no reason. Like something that adds nothing, like n not even a moonlit butt shot like you used to see in Little Weapon, no, just full on dong because it's a European, it's, we're Europeans. So stuff like this kind of happens. Directors just want to feel like they're European. So anyway, Grand Theft Auto, but set in Bucharest. We kind of already have the ideas of it sprinkled out through various mods over the past 20 years. There just needs to be one game that brings it all together and maybe maybe treats it with a bit of respect and we don't get just Saints Row. Like, you, you kind of want it to also have a point to it, hopefully. Number six, Dacians versus Romans RTS. Now, if you don't know what the Dacians are, I I'm actively working on a movie called Dacians versus Ninjas, which I hope will explain Dacians to the world like Asterix did with the Gauls. Dacians used to live here. They were the they were a branch sort of of the Thracians. They are our ancestors in, in, in as much as they can be our ancestors because uh, well uh, the Romans came and they uh, they fought and they fought and they fought and they fought and at one point they genocided them. Then Christianity came and uh, genocided what was left of their culture. Then again every each and every empire came around and we've got a history of being sort of the punching bag of everybody and not really learning from it not growing not evolving not actively trying to rise above it escape it and not perpetuate the cycle of misery well basically what have we what we've got of the Dacians currently are bits and pieces of their their language as is still in ours stuff like Barza, Viesure, Mins, Brinza that's cheese by the way that's how we say cheese but Rinza, just listen to it. it just rolls off your tongue you just want to eat it up had to pause the recording here because i went and ate some really really lovely sheep cheese and we've got some archaeological elements which uh, the uh, communists kind of uh, ruined and then the people currently uh, in charge of them also ruined and uh, oh yeah we also got a bunch of nut jobs that will actively ruin any attempt to actually understand the dations by claiming that the dations invented space travel or something like that that they had a portal to Egypt or a thousand mile tunnel under the Black Sea that led to I don't know where the gist of it is that the Dacians were an ancient people that at one point got so drunk before a battle that they lost. So their leader burned down all the vineyards so they would stop making wine and getting drunk. And over several hundred years they fought the Romans. And those battles should be remade in the form of a real-time strategy game or maybe a hybrid in the style of Total War. Now, technically, this game existed. I think it was called uh, Codenames Amor it was in development 20 years ago when a book publisher called Nemira was actually trying to get a foot into the video gaming market. Now this was really brave of them because at that point in time uh, nobody in Romania bought video games because basically nobody had a computer. Well most people didn't have computers. I didn't. And of the people that had computers uh, pretty much nobody bought original software or games because well you could couldn't afford them for one and two, uh, you can only really find where to buy them. It was a lot easier to find pirated games than it was to find the original ones. That was just how things worked. Piracy was one part economics and one part a problem of distribution just like Gabe Newell said. But the game was in development. I, I have images from it. Well, scanned images from a magazine. Sadly, when the game was already far 
speed up in development, I would say, Nemira pulled out. They gave up on the idea and it went poof. And we need that game. We need it because, one, we've wanted it for so long. We keep trying to make mods of Total War or the various Paradox Interactive games, but we need something that is ours, something that we made, something that is made with our sensibilities, with our understanding of the Dacians and the Romans and what they mean to us, not just as historical figures, but also as the myth of our creation, our genesis, our Sega Saturn, if you will. And once we have that game, then it'll be a lot easier to explain to other people what we are, who we are, through that game. It's like Grand Admiral Thrawn once said, that you can learn a lot about a, a culture from its art. And games are art. They are a very different kind of art. They are interactive art. And because of that interactive component, they can be more easily understand or more deeply understood. Also, Grand Admiral Thrawn seems to be in Star Wars again. I heard his name on, on that show with, with the with Greg and Manda Eva Longoria and you know the the person who should have played Wonder Woman and Gus Fring. Oh, by the way, here's here's something funny. A tangent, one of many. In Breaking Bad, there was a Romanian actor playing a Romanian character. He was the owner of the car wash where Walter White worked. And the thing is, Romanians in most Hollywood depictions are criminals, but in this show, where basically everybody was a criminal, he was the only one who was never a criminal. The guy with the eyebrows, you remember him, right? That guy. So uh, b back to Dacians versus Romans. RTS, it can take a lot of different shapes, but it has to be one side the Dacians ruled by Dichabal with the standard of Draco, the wolf-headed dragon behind them, and on the other side the Romans led by Trajan with their Spocure signs and their legions, and you can have Apollodor from Damascus be there. By the way, the guy wasn't from Damascus, what a total liar, making his bridge. You can have the, the maybe weather play an effect because at one point the Danube froze over so the Romans walked simply into Dacia as opposed to using the bridge and then they uh, genocided everybody and stole uh, thousands of tons of gold and silver upon which they built uh, their empire a bit stronger and uh, hey Italy um, you uh, you doing okay? How's that PayPal state of yours? Is it uh, doing fine? Got any spare change over there? Can I feel like you owe us a bit? Anyway, it's water under the bridge. Apollodor from Damascus Bridge, which you know went over the Danube and hey, anyway. Number five, tropical Romania. Now, technically, um, I do believe, well, I, at least I know that there's a reference, there's, there's a character sheet for Ceausescu in Tropico, the original one. But Tropico isn't precisely what I would call an accurate depiction of a Soviet nation. And, and I wouldn't want the game that I'm thinking of to be uh, that either, because you kind of have that with uh, Workers and Resources Soviet Republic, which is a Soviet city builder that has a lot of things that will you know, look like my town. But specifically what I want is a post-Soviet city builder or country manager because Tropico uh, sort of identifies the country as also the city because it's a small island thing, it's it's an insular thing. You could do that with post-Soviet Romania because Romania in the 90s was, oh boy, uh, we had inflation that will make your head spin. We had some of the biggest thefts in human history. Again, nobody's held accountable. The rule of law, if you steal enough money or do a big enough crime, just doesn't apply to you. You're, you're a superstar at that point. They'll invite you on TV shows and say, oh my god, you're so amazing. You led to a lot of people being dead now. What are your thoughts about what this idiot did that we keep promoting instead of culture? You can do a lot in that period of time, which well, thankfully we're kind of still in that period of time for Romania. We had private privatizations where be before in the olden times everything was owned by the state everything every industry every bit of land every absolutely everything was owned by the state and after uh, you know uh, that didn't actually function properly because you know 
vindictive, cruel, horrible human beings ran everything before and after. Everything broke apart and uh, they started privatizing things, selling things off, sometimes in a smart way like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dacia got bought out by Renault at one point, which actually let it flourish, making the Logan, making the Sandero, which is James May's favorite car, making the Duster. Now it's being made in a lot of other places because uh, we don't have roads in Romania to actually deliver the cars to anybody because, you know... <laughs> Nobody wanted to uh, do that. It, the, one of the main reasons why we don't have roads is because when people have mobility, when they can move around from town to town, from county to county, a certain ruling class called the uh, local baron no longer has power. The local baron is the mac daddy of the place, sort of the... They can be either a mayor or a um, head of the uh, municipal council or the county council. People who will uh, basically steal massive amounts of money own pretty much every company that has contracts with the state in that region and they will uh, never be held accountable for any damage they do, for all the evil things they do, for making such a bad job as setting up a school that a child dies by falling into an outdoor toilet. That's not a joke, that, that's something that happens in this country and nobody is held accountable ever. You can make a really terrifyingly realistic game if you wanted to with that concept of what happened to my country with, with the land being given to people that never owned it in the uh, property return program. We call them retrocedari, which was something that had happened because well, the state confiscated all private property in the 40s because communism. And when they gave it back, they gave it to people that never owned it. And they gave it back hospitals. They gave back places that were being actively used to make the community a better place. And they were ruined they were destroyed because the land under them was more valuable. Like, the, the U.S. Embassy is built on stolen land. The person that sold the land to the U.S. government to build their embassy didn't own it. You can make a tropical-style game about bureaucracy, corruption, absolute madness out of Romania. You could even try to spin it in, in a funny way because at one point you have to laugh at it. Because if you don't, if you accept this to be reality and you don't try to mock it, you, you go crazy because you can't change it. A generation, probably two, will have to die out and everything they've made, everything they've left behind, everything they've thought to others has to be forgotten for us to have a chance at being a normal country, a normal people. And maybe through this game we can actually try and kill those ideas at least. Because as long as they stay in the shadows, they can fester, but you bring them out to the light and you mock them, you belittle them, you tear them down, then maybe then they have a chance of finally going away. Hopefully. It probably won't happen in my lifetime. Not as long as everybody seems to think that the solution is to just blame it on others. Oh, it's it's not the fault of the corrupt people that we keep putting in power. No, it's it's the gypsies who are at fault. No, it's the Hungarians. It's the, okay, technically, yeah, it kind of is the Russians. The Russians actively, actively, uh, how should I put this? Uh, th they have military drills with them assaulting the anti-missile shield that we have uh, like on the western part of the country. Also, the U.S. kind of screws us repeatedly in certain areas. But at least they're building a road that goes from Poland to Romania, so uh, we have that. Man, I remember when Poland and Romania actually shared a border. <laughs> Fun times. Did I mention we abandoned millions of people, millions of our own people that are now being reduced to nothing, their culture being erased, their language being forbidden, their identity stripped away in countries that are right next to us? Not saying that Romania doesn't try to assimilate others but we have bilingual status for places that's not something we are afforded so Romanian Tropico needs to happen because it is probably gonna be super messed up number four an actually good vampire game now I'm not saying there haven't been good vampire games in the past we just got a bunch of remakes of the uh, Blood Rain games which they're, they're they're half vampire games technically they're dumpier games and there was that uh, that, that vampire game spelled wrongly by uh the don't not people that also made that game i just can't remember the name of 
we've had a bunch of well, Vampire the Masquerade, both of them good games, Bloodlands, especially superb. The second one is uh, probably still gonna come out at one point, hopefully, maybe, as long as uh, people that are key to the program don't uh, keep quitting. However, we, we haven't really had like a vampire game starring Dracula and and well, okay there's secret files Dracula which I don't know if they start Dracula but there's like 17 of them or something they're like the Nancy Drew of vampire games Nancy Drew by the way um, they're good games played a few of them made shows of I haven't made any show of a Nancy Drew game in English though made them in Romania okay so back to the matter thing the myth of Dracula is something that's been somewhat borrowed from this area of the world with the popular idea being that Dracula is Vlad Sepes Dracula as we used to call him sometimes we call him that because his dad was uh, part of the Ordo Draconis the Order of the Dragon which was a German thing anyway it's about dragons not devils because Dracula dragon devil dragon they, they kind of have the same root in our culture there's a dragon the balaur the uh, embodiment of nature's ferocity and the devil as well as christianity slowly robbed us of our identity and now uh, insists we go to meetings in the middle of a pandemic and nobody's gonna get held accountable when a bunch of people die because of it because they built a multi hundred million dollar mega church while over half the country is below the poverty line Anyway, churches, uh, never mind about that. So, Vlad the Impaler. You know the dude, right? He was the Prince of Wallachia. He used to be a hostage. We used to do that. We used to give hostages to the Ottomans. So they would say, uh, yeah, you're cool. You can be uh, you can be prince here. We'll just take your son. Make sure you're uh, not uh, gonna, you know, do some nasty things. We're cool. Just pay us some money. And from time to time, we'll, uh, we'll kidnap some of your kids. But they'll be treated fairly, some will be soldiers, some will be bureaucrats. Hey, they could even have a better life than they would have in your crappy country. But we're gonna kidnap them, so <laughs> not like you have a choice. Anyway, um, Vlad Impaler, you know the guy, right? So how about a game about him being Dracula, him being a vampire? And no, I I'm not just suggesting making a Helsing video game set in Romania, though that would be awesome, but a vampire game where you play as the titular Dracula is... Okay, Castlevania, yeah, did that as well, but one that's more rooted into the lore, the, the local lore of who Vlad the Impaler was, the atrocities he committed as a medieval, well, medieval times technically were in Romania at that point, and medieval for some people maybe a bit before that, like 500 years before that, but we're slow on the uptake. So he was a warlord, he did things that weren't especially cruel compared to what the, the norm of the, the day was for that, this area of the world. Like, he didn't invent impaling, like, uh, our neighbors from the east were doing it too, also setting people on fire alive, it uh, was a thing. But anyway, so th this wouldn't be based necessarily on him being you know, Vlad the Impaler in his time, but being Dracula over a certain span of time, maybe after his supposed death and resurrection as a vampire. You know, maybe in modern times, well, not exactly modern times, because he would uh, probably find a smartphone somewhere and just have an aneurysm. No, uh, maybe set in, like, interbellic times. Sort of like Vampire was. But what would, would set it apart from, from other vampire games? Well, for one thing, it would be heavily based on vampire lore, of what a vampire can do, what a vampire cannot do. Which is something that uh, a lot of games really have glossed over. You, you can't go into sunlight, okay, but can you cross running water without having your coffin with you? There is an idea. Do you have an obsession with counting things that are thrown before you? Okay, so I'm pulling these out of Dracula 2000, okay, give me a break, it's been a long time since I read Dracula, or seen the movie, but we, we have the idea of moroi in, in our culture of the undead rising to suck the blood of the the living we uh, actually had an instant a couple of years ago where a priest got a bunch of upstanding citizens to dig up somebody and eat their heart because they thought he was a vampire because everybody was getting sick in town and they thought that was that was the way to do it and these people vote and these people decide the fate of the nation and you kind of understand what the country's like this because nobody ever 
is held accountable and education is terrible. But with a vampire video game, we uh, we totally cannot fix any of that. But we will have our vampire video game. We we will finally own it because every other country has been doing it since time immemorial. We, you've always said, well, Transylvania, the place where vampires and werewolves live. Why shouldn't we do that as well? Why can't we own own it? Sure, it's a kitsch. It's something we've thankfully imported from others, but we can change it. We can make it our own. We, we... Helsing is a thoroughly Japanese production. You can feel it. It is superbly Japanese, but it is based on the English interpretation of a Romanian character. And it is beautiful. So if they can do that... Also, I think th th there is a manga with Ceausescu that they have. But if they can do that, we c we can take back Dracula as well. There's there there, there have been attempts to do this uh, uh, about 30 years ago with with Dracula Land, which was a well, not 30 25 22 years ago with Dracula Land, which was supposed to be a park where uh, people would come and uh, they they'd go on Dracula themed rides and buy Dracula themed food. And uh, th this was, I think, the the plan of a mayor from Cluj or something. And uh, it got abandoned because it was stupid, monumentally stupid. It was the kitschiest thing possible. It was sort of a bit of an insult to us as a people of the culture, but as a video game, one that is meant for export, one that is meant for other people that are already familiar with the character. It would be a neat way to actually get them to learn a bit more about, you know, uh, the locations and the people that a supposed Vlad Sipish Dracula would have interacted with and the fact that Vlad Sipish was the ruler of Valachia, of Sara Romanesca, Montaigne, the place where I'm in, not Transylvania, which at the time was ruled by the then current uh, king of Hungary, Matej Corvin, Matthias I. He was kind of also Romanian, at least his dad was, sort of. It's kind of hard to be in the same place for a thousand years and uh, not have a massive amount of overlap. We're fundamentally kind of the same people at this point, honestly. But just keep putting up those fences. I'm sure that'll keep the uh, immigrants out. So anyway, we could have a vampire game and make it good. At least maybe not good in gameplay because uh, I kind of hope Dark, starring Doug Cockle, the voice of Geralt, would be good as well. But in terms of gameplay, it was kind of terrible. In terms of lore, it was super stupid. Like in that game, when you became a vampire, you got special powers. The main character's powers were... Uh, believe something to do with darkness they could shift through the shadows like like in Dishonored and they also had one other character whose special vampire power was hacking computers so it, it was so goddamn stupid we can at least do something better than dark I believe to my core that we can do something better than dark Hopefully. Number three, Pakala Adventure. This is something that I've been saying for years that should happen. Pakala is a character in some folk slash adventure light novels, stuff like that. Novellas, I believe they're, they're called in, in English. He is a trickster character. He is somebody who represents the simplicity of the Romanian mind. He is someone who is, yeah, you could, you could kind of call him stupid, but he's stupid in a way that makes everybody else look dumb. He's somebody who doesn't really conform to conventions of society because he doesn't get why. People get upset with him because of it and he uh, he makes their lives a living hell. He He's a trickster character, but he's not at the godly level of trickster. Well, te okay, technically, he met God once and he gave him a magic flute. But apart from that, if this were the Marvel Cinematic Universe or something, he would be a street level hero. He doesn't fight devils like Danila Prepelak did where he uh, challenged Satan to a contest of swear words and instead of him participating his kids did and they made the devil blush because kids are terrible human beings. Now uh, Pakala usually deals with other people. People who in some ways have wronged others. He's basically the Animaniacs or Bugs Bunny. He's a bit thick in the head but when he puts his mind to it he can be devilishly witty with the way he punishes wrongdoers and this would be an exceptional character an exceptional type of story to translate into an adventure game into a point and click adventure game and i think stuck in the attic should do it gibbous is good and they're working now on, on another game so after they finish that game which i think will also have a horror tint to it they could do pakala 
Probably the best way I can describe his character is that he f sort of fits the archetype of Guybrush, Threepwood and Roger Wilka, where he is fun-loving, light-hearted character that wants to help people, but when they rob him the wrong way or when they actively do something bad to others, like a priest did to his brothers, he will go out of his way to uh, make that person's life a living hell, but not in a violent way, no, no. He will do exactly what those people tell him to do, because he usually ends up working as their servant, but he will fulfill their actions, sort of like, like, a, like a malevolent genie, or a genie in general, in a way that will make them regret it. And having that be the core of a puzzle of how can I solve this, this task I am given in a way that the master will be absolutely mortified. You could have fun with that in so many ways. And also you have the, the kind of supernatural element because he does get that flute from God that when he plays everybody around him must dance. You could have that it'll be like the item he pulls out at the end of the game to finish off the, the villain or something. There's a bunch of interpretations of the character. He's a full character. He's been in a lot of stuff. There's been two movies about him. Both movies were made by people who I believe were on drugs because the movies make no goddamn sense any way you look at them. At one point they have a day for night shot where, where they forgot to actually do a day for night shot so it's just broad daylight and it's stupid beyond belief. And well, it's a European film so it, uh, the, the sequel, the one that was made post-communism has nudity in it because it wouldn't be a European art film without it. So Pakala needs to happen. Pakala is great. It is a fantastic idea to make an adventure game out of. A light-hearted comedy with wit, with satire, with cunning, with... Well, what a Monkey Allen made in Romania should have. Jokes about cheese, I imagine. Number two, adaptations of our classic movies. So uh, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, we had a bunch of movies. A lot of them, and I mean a lot of them, were communist propaganda, but they, they, were, they were nice movies. And th among the, uh, the the ones that weren't communist propaganda were some really good adventure ones. We had stuff like Mud Gelato, which was basically a western about a sunflower seed eating mercenary type loner guy with a gun that fired six bullets at once doing all sorts of stuff, like outlaw stuff and in-law stuff. It's, he did stuff like it was action, punching, kicking, you know, western. You could do something like that. You, you could adapt the uh, a Commissar Accusers series, which was kind of communist propaganda, but there were good movies about a cop fighting against crime and fighting against Nazis. Also had one of the most painful looking falls down a hell scene I've ever seen because Zobichek just, just falls down a hell for like 10 minutes. Oh man, that, that man was a legend. You could do adventures like, like Toate Pânzele Sus, which was, was a series about people sailing around the world looking for the friend of the captain who was lost at sea many years ago and then they have a an underwater base at one point for no reason. So like, like a Joel Verne inspired thing is great. You could adapt Kirita, which okay technically it's based off some books but the character was really well portrayed by Drago Oltano Matei as this larger than life upscale sort of noble woman that comes home from Paris and just the English have a saying fucks shit up like when she opens her mouth like she like it's if you've seen Kung Fu Hustle in Imagine the uh, the owner, the woman, the old lady. Imagine her, but without the kung fu, but with everything else apart from the kung fu. It's that kind of character, and she's the central focus, not not the foil, not the enemy, not some side character. She is the focus of those stories. You can adapt that as well as an adventure game, or Seven Horses as Highwaymen, which sounds silly in English when I say it, but we used to have the Hajduk motif, the Hajduk character, the highwayman, you know, the, the Scarlet Pumpernickel, the what's your face's other kind of, the one Daffy Duck portrayed, yeah, that kind of character. Well, okay, maybe not exactly that kind of character because uh, they, they, they weren't nobility that became outlaws in secret to fight some, no, they, they were outlaws from the get-go that really uh, stuck it to the man, the man being the, the boyers, the, uh, the local barons, which we still have nowadays. And there were a bunch 
bunch of movies in that series uh, with Hamza Pele and uh, Toma Karajiu and a lot of them with Florin Piersik. And you could do that as, as an action adventure. You could do that as an action. As a Red Dead Redemption again if you didn't do it already with, uh, with Mari Gelato. There are so many great movies to adapt into video games. It, it, because it, it, often it's not just the uh, the story you're adapting. It's the, the way that the characters were portrayed. And it's, it's also the aesthetic because... As I've mentioned uh, once or twice, uh, some of the movies were made by people who were obviously possibly on drugs or were so starved because of the famines that we used to have back then that their brains weren't working properly and they just hallucinated things and put them on paper and the results were movies that were weird ass things. I, I, I read a high fever once when I was sick a couple of years ago and on TV there was there was a movie and I'm, I'm honestly not sure uh, how much of it I actually hallucinated because it just seemed a bit too weird to actually be a movie that existed. Okay, thankfully that one, that one was made in the 90s. So you know some of them were uh, riding the dragon, going puff puff or a power puff and stuff. Anyway, you could adapt a lot of these movies, provided that you get the rights for them and the likeness rights and maybe some voice acting from uh, the few, so very few actors that played in them that are still alive and ones that aren't horrible people like that guy I actually thought would represent a, a valued input to, uh, you know, the, the political system as a Euro parliamentier, a, a European MP, uh, you know, for protecting the rights of the uh, the artists and he screwed us over in that vote once and oh man, I, I am not trusting people ever again. Point is, a lot of movies that could be adapted. A lot of good, good movies. Movies that make you feel good, not just um, not, not just the misery porn that we've had in, for a long, long time. From the mid-90s to about 7, 10 years ago, we, we've mostly just had misery porn movies where it's about suffering and how much suffering there is in poverty and how much suffering the poverty causes and how poor we are and how much we suffer and they all kind of boil down to two people sitting at a table in a badly lit kitchen eating chorba and talking. Chorba, by the way, is like soup but has borscht in it. There's an entire genre of movies that are just that. It's two people sitting in a badly lit kitchen with some sort of soup or chorba being involved while they talk. That was Romanian movies for about 20 years and they all got palm d'or and other stuff. Also, there was uh, nudity in them because they were European art films. And the number one is basically The Witcher. Now, at this point in time, I, I get the feeling I've made this show before. Maybe not an hour long like this one seems to be going, but I, I think I probably have mentioned this before. We need our own The Witcher. Now, because we don't actually have a, a character that is as deeply rooted in uh, literature as Geralt of Rivia, as complex as the books by Sapkowski are, this would be more of a uh, combination of our folk characters. Like like an Avengers of our fairy tales, if you will. Like, like that thing I tried to do and failed, because... It look like crap anyway, but this could be an epic, sprawling action RPG about our shared folklore. The one that we, we have in common with our neighbors to the north, to the east, to the window, to the floor, to the wow. The censored version of the song is much, much better. And also the stuff that we have that are our own, that are unique to us. The Kalushar, you could, you could be a Kalushar in the game. God even knows what a Kalushar is nowadays. They're just people in funny outfits doing some dance that was probably invented 4,000 years ago by some Zamolxia worshipping madman in a mountain somewhere. Anyway, a fantasy RPG, open world possibly, where you travel the plains and mountains and mud volcanoes and seas and rivers and all the places of this land and take part in all sorts of adventures. Adventures. You fight the Baba Yaga, which isn't John Wick, hopefully. Oh my god, could, could we get Keanu to be in this? I mean, we should. CD Projekt did it, so we should too. So you could travel the world and hunt these monsters. Again, it's a ripoff of The Witcher. You could befriend them sometimes. You, you, could, you could challenge them to contests. Because again, one of the big motifs in our culture is that 
No, you cannot shoot the devil in the face and kill him. He's the devil. That's, that's this is a bit, by the way, from uh, from uh, that Doom thing. I I wanted to do at one point, but then decided it would be just noise, so I didn't bother doing it. Instead of you know fighting the devil in one-on-one -on -one macho man Randy Savage type situation, you would have to outsmart the devil. So again, like The Witcher when he fought the Master of Mirrors. God damn, The Witcher Three is such a good representation of folklore. We want that. We need that. We need to have our tiny, tiny, tiny bit of a fairy tale out there so that people will understand who we are or who we were or who we dream we were or who we think we dream we had a chance of being once. There's so many fairy tales, so many stories that could be united under one roof, under one game engine and one world with one set of physics, with one combat system, with dialogue, with investigation components, with branching narratives maybe, who knows, those things are pain to actually play test. Would you be fighting too like in that stupid thing I did, who knows? Possibly not. You probably just end up fighting the devil, because that's generally what, what we do. Or, or, or a balaur. A balaur, a zmeu, something in our old, old traditions. You'd be fighting the darkness, fighting the night, fighting, fighting the times. Trying to stop modernization from ruining the place. It's kind of ruined even back then, but yeah, it was slower to ruin. Unless you, you know, uh, you salted the earth and poisoned all the wells, which we did quite often. We were being invaded like 24 7, so uh, you had to dissuade people from sticking around. I believe such a game could have success. Now, to make such a game, to actually make it good, you would need a really big budget and. Uh, you just know that uh, nobody in Romania is going to bankroll that. A lot of people could afford to bankroll that, but they made their money by stealing it outright and never being held accountable for it. <laughs> so it's it's never going to happen. And not in my generation. Maybe when I'm 90, if I ever live to be that old and want to, maybe somewhere around there we'll, we'll see something like that. Until then, it's just going to be... Uh... <sighs> The gaming industry at this point in Romania is held up by two pillars. There's the, the big studios that have their satellites here, their, their Ubisofts, the Activisions, you know, the electronic cards where, where they farm out QA, they farm out assets and occasionally some design and we get, you know, uh, Wildlands, parts of Wildlands. Generally the sucky parts of Ubisoft games are made here, where I believe the animations of... Uh, <laughs> Assess of not Assassin's Creed, uh, Mass Effect and Andromeda were also made here. I think that that's where the blame was put in the end on uh, the Romanian studio. And the other pillar is the Indies, and the Indies they have a lot of heart. The Indies make fantastic things. We kind of have a Yaga, which is the kind of game I want to see with like the ripoff of The Witcher via Fairy Tale Avengers. But the, the, the Indies are not going to have the budget to do something like this. Maybe if they are successful, like really successful, and they get the proper support from you know the media which they won't because the mainstream media is currently occupied with being owned by political parties and just feeding poison to everybody but somewhere in there there is a glimmer of hope that we will emerge from this and have these games have have the avengers fairy tale witcher ripoff have the adaptations of so many wonderful movies some of them being communist propaganda have the pakala adventures again made by stuck in the attic please you can do it i know you can have have a vampire dracula game that we take ownership of and make everybody our bitch like John Romero always wanted to. By the way, John Romero's site, you know, rome.ro, that, 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 that's the Romanian domain. Have the Romanian Tropico, which will be equally funny and depressing. Have the Dacians versus Romans, RTS and let loose the endless jokes about the ducks come from the trucks, which is what one of our former presidents and crime against humanity uh, committing, uh, Elias Illustrious leaders once said, Have you GTA Bucharest? Where stuff like throwing a grenade at a school, uh, that wouldn't be fiction, that'd be just something that happened one day. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's a wonderful country. One that's currently being filled up with anti-vaxxers and religious zealots and people who are just playing uh, neo-Nazis. Maybe, maybe through these games, maybe we can evolve, hopefully. Who knows? Maybe we won't. Probably we won't. I mean, yeah. uh, 
Midnight was 20 years ago, people. It's it's all just ghosts and ashes now. But these were the top seven Romanian games I wish will be made someday. And a lot of tangents. Thank you for sticking with me. Oh, special mentions. A Danube pirate sim. Uh, if you don't know, there is a character, a folk hero. He's real. We we have his penis in a jar somewhere in a museum. There's a guy called Terente who is who, who he was a pirate on the Danube, and he was famous for uh, rapes. A lot of rapes. He uh, was apparently good at it. And did I mention we have a really kind of kooky culture? Culture. Kooky. Anyway, his wang is now in a jar at a museum. Also, a special mention to uh, an anti-communist resistance guerrilla game, which we had anti-communist resistance movements that basically hauled themselves up in mountains and tried to fight the communists and, well, they failed. Things they did to such people were... Uh, uh, you know Clockwork Orange? We did that for real. We did that to people. The communists really, really wanted people to love them. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. And we, uh, we, we now pay... Uh, those people, oh, not the victims, the the ones that did it, we, we pay special pensions for them to uh, live happily ever after, after committing crimes against humanity, because no one is ever held accountable, and never will be. This is hell. The world ended, and this is hell. Or just Romania, you know, could be either way. Again, thank you for sticking with me. This will probably not be the last show of the year. I'm gonna try and do the... Uh, for the thing I guess I said I would do, possibly, maybe, who knows. Still, happy December 1st, everybody. May you have a better 2021 than you did with 2020. Now, usually I say 2021 and 2020, but I said it now like that in the spirit of our illustrious Prime Minister, the Vincila, former Prime Minister. She wanted to be president too. And we sent her to be a European MP, even though she, she, uh, she was kind of an idiot. Why wouldn't she be? I mean, nobody's ever held like, nobody's ever held accountable. Take care of yourselves. Be happy. Try to do good. Try to be a tiny bit better yourself. Try to help other people be a tiny bit better as well. And day by day, minute by minute, well, maybe, maybe make this place better. Maybe. I mean, it depends. We also have the secret police that's still doing its thing, and it's kind of hard to uh, do stuff with them around. Goodbye, everybody.